Now this is sorrel. And I'll draw the leaf. It's actually a bit pointy. So the, the identifying with sorrel is it has those two little lobes at the bottom and sometimes Sometimes it'll have another little dip there. So what we've already looked at is chickweed. We've also looked at um, radium. And remember the chickweed's the nice one with the little thread and the radium that has the milk in it. And we've also looked at stinging nettle. A friend of mine is German and he says that he makes stinging nettle salad. I said you make stinging nettle salad. And what he does is he cuts it up really, really tiny. I've yet to eat it. <laughs> yes, that's nettle tea. Yeah, nettle tea. And you'll find, um, if you find a mix for, say, the prostate, you'll often have nettle in it. And the other thing nettle is used for is um, it's high in iron. So often if people are anemic, they'll use nettle tea. If you get a herb book, you'll find many herbs have got a whole lot of things you can do, but I like to target the specifics because there are some herbs that are specifically better for certain things than others. Last night I talked about the hawthorn berry, <coughs> and the hawthorn berry is a specific for the heart. Cayenne pepper is a specific for the blood, and that's good news. That means it can be used all over the body. In fact, in the book Curing with Cayenne, the author Sam Beiser, he says you can put cayenne pepper with other herbs to increase their, their potency. So you could put cayenne pepper with, with hawthorn berry to increase the hawthorn berry's f action on the heart. And you can put um, cayenne pepper with something like uh, cranberry, which will help to increase the cranberry's ability to help resolve uh, UTI or urinary tract infections. So what do you use sorrel for? Um, sorrel is one of those green herbs and there are many of them that is, a, that is like a sweet bitter. So if you chew on the sorrel it almost has a sweet aftertaste but it's a, a slightly bitter and all your bitter herbs are specifics for your liver and all your green herbs are very high in chlorophyll and chlorophyll is plant blood and the molecular structure of chlorophyll is very similar to the molecular structure of human blood. Let me show you. So this is the molecular structure of human blood and this is the molecular structure of plant blood which is chlorophyll. So there's the plant and there's the human almost identical, almost. The middle molecule in plant is magnesium and the middle molecule in human is iron. And that's why the, the green drinks, the um, green barleys, green smoothies, all your green plants, except for the radium, you can use to boost, boost iron in the blood. Also, green juice, which is your plant blood, it's one of the most potent blood and tissue cleansers in the body. It cleanses the tissues. So sorrel, throw it in your salads, it's quite nice. Buzz it up in your green drinks, very nice. Now there's one that you probably would not want to put in your green drinks, 
definitely not the radium, and that is dandelion. Now I was able to get quite a few different specimens of dandelion and the way to identify dandelion is the line has sharp teeth and so on the edge of the dandelion there's very sharp edges. Now those edges don't look very sharp. I found this one um, right underneath a bush and look at this leaf here, it hardly even looks like a dandelion leaf but if you look closely you can see those little edges. But I was able to find, um, it's got a bit of dirt in it, this one was near the front door and can you see the leaves are very sharp there? And you would wonder if that and that was the same plant, wouldn't you? But you see grown in different areas, this was more sun exposed and weather exposed whereas this one was more underneath the bushes. So the identifying factors with the dandelion are these sharp, sharp corners. Remember dandelion, the lion's teeth. So that's dandelion. Now there is another herb that looks very similar to dandelion. It's called catsia. Now with the dandelion, the dandelion plant will just shoot up one stalk with one flower, whereas the cat's claw will shoot up several stalks and the stalk will divide and it'll have several flowers. I couldn't see a cat here, but I did, ah oh, yes I did, I found in the grass the dandelion stem. Now the dandelion stem See, the dandelion and the cat's ear flower look very similar. They're both yellow, but the dandelion flower will be a little bit bigger, so you'll know which is which by the stem. And the dandelion stem is hollow. My children used to pick them and use them as straws. <laughs> so the dandelion stem is hollow, and also the cat's ear stem is not. It's sort of more disjointed. And again, in fact, I'll draw a picture of it. We'll rub this one out. So with the dandelion, it's it's definitely it's it's got the sharp leaves. And then you'll have lots of leaves here. And it'll just have one stem that'll go straight up and it'll have the flower on top. Whereas the cat's ear, the the leaves are more like this. They're more round, they're not sharp, but they're very similar. They have all the leaves around like that, but they'll have a stem that'll go like that and they'll have the yellow flower on it like that. And sometimes they have another one that, that divides like that and it'll have the flower up like that. Once you start looking, you'll be able to identify the difference. Another big difference between the cat's claw and the dandelion is not only the sharp edges, but dandelion is smooth, whereas cat's claw is a little bit furry. Now, as, as far as the east is from the west is the medicinal properties. Cat's claw, it's basically only good thing about it is it's a green plant. <laughs> whereas dandelion, Lion is the king of the jungle and I think dandelion is the king of the, the herbs in the garden because dandelion is a bitter herb. If you were to, to bite it and eat it, it's, it's very, very bitter. And you've heard the old saying, sweet to the mouth, bitter to the stomach. Sweet to the mouth, bitter to the stomach. Think of that with sugar. Sugar is sweet to the mouth but very bitter to the stomach. Whereas your bitter herbs like dandelion, they're bitter to the mouth but very sweet to the stomach because it's the bitter herbs that stimulate the liver to release, to release its um, digestive enzymes. And also it can, the bitterness causes the stomach to release its digestive enzymes too. Dandelion is the liver herb. Your liver is a recoverable organ. It's the only organ in the body that has the ability to regrow or recover. That's why they can do a liver transplant on just a little bit of liver and the, the liver will regrow.